fabric cover again because in La Havre there is a lot to see. You have many different options. If you've already been to Paris before, if you don't want to drive all the way to Paris, if you want to see the D-Day beaches. So there are many, many options. So as you can see on the map, we'll be uh, in the northern part of France in the region called Haute Normandie. Excellent cuisine, I can already tell you that. So this is what the port will look like. We're at the green letter A. Uh, to go to the downtown area, the drive will be about a 20 minutes by bus. Walking is possible, but will take you a bit longer today. Now, Le Havre is a typical uh, harbor port, hence the name Le Havre, translating to the harbor. So, um, Le Havre was heavily bombed during uh, the Battle of Normandy. Um, Strange thing is though that the city center is quite new, however it is UNESCO, so it's one of the few places in Europe that are actually on the UNESCO World Heritage site, although it is not that old. But it's quite a nice place to walk around, you've got your shops, you've got your restaurants. Um, this building here in the middle, it's called the Volcano. It was um, designed by the architect Oscar Niemeyer from Brazil and it's the house of culture so you can have a look in there behind that you've got the church of saint joseph so la Havre is definitely a nice place to walk around and visit but there is so much more to see for instance there is paris the capital of fashion romance and france of course um how many of you have been to paris before oh many of you how many are going again oh, quite a few all right well paris is one of my favorite cities in the world although it's so busy I don't think I could ever live there but it's beautiful because there is so much history and the buildings are just amazing now everybody of course knows the Eiffel Tower it's the landmark of, of the city of the entire country and um, the design actually won the contest for the world's fair so it wasn't even supposed to stay here this long because the locals didn't even like it that much but luckily it stayed because Paris would be unthinkable without the Eiffel Tower so it's been there since 1889 and uh, designed of course by Gustave Eiffel who we know for many other designs around the world for instance the Statue of Liberty in, um, in New York now from the top you have an amazing view because the tower is 324 meters high now you can't go all the way to the top but you can go a pretty high way um the most steps that you can do there are 367 but luckily there are some elevators as well so uh, do keep in mind if you're planning to go to paris on your own and this is what you want to do that this might be the only thing that you do because it's such a popular um tourist attraction everybody wants to climb the Eiffel Tower and there is a very long line so do keep that in mind now the Seine River which uh, starts actually at La Havre flows all the way through for 776 kilometers in fact right through Paris now it's very unfortunate that the ship is too big to go uh, to go through so it will take about a two hour two and a half hours drive from the port to get to Paris but what's so amazing about the river is that you can take a canal cruise and you'll see all these amazing buildings because Paris is a very, very big city. There's a lot to see and you're definitely not going to be able to do it all by foot. You'll be very, very tired, I can tell you that. So to take, um, to take a canal cruise is a much better option and you'll go under 37 bridges. Uh, some of them are the Pont Neuf. Many people lock their lock there nowadays. In fact, so many people do it, they had to come up with a new bridge because there wasn't enough space to lock, uh, to lock more love. So very popular, um, popular thing to do in Paris. The Champs-Elysees, one of the most famous avenues of, um, of the world, I can say, one of the most expensive strips of real estate as well. This runs for about two kilometers uh, from two very important places, which I'll mention in a second. Um, so when you walk on the Champs-Elysees, you can get basically everything from high-end um, high fashion. You can buy your new car there. Uh, you can go to the restaurant afterwards and sleep in one of the luxury hotels that are located here. But for the nationals, it's also a very important place. Many important um, demonstrations have taken place here, but who is, a, who is a cyclist? Who likes to watch the Tour de France? Not too many. Well, this is the last stage of the Tour de France, in case you didn't know. Uh, this is where they race 
the final the final few kilometers after all those days. But this is also where the 14th of July fireworks take place, Bastille Day. So this is a very important place for the French. So on the one end of the Champs Elysees, you will find the Arc de Triomphe. Now, if you have plans to go to uh, to Paris, or if you've been there already before, you know that the traffic around this monument is horrendous, isn't it? I remember the first time I was there, I was afraid of the traffic. Everybody tries to squeeze through. That's an uh, that's an experience at once. Uh, but it's a beautiful, beautiful monument. And over there on the other end, you have the Concorde Square, which is one of the largest squares in Paris. And um, now I understand maybe not all of you speak fluent French, but who knows the term guillotine? Yes, there you go. I knew you'd know that word. Um, King Louis the 16th was actually executed here on this square during the French Revolution by guillotine. So uh, quite a bloody square, uh, I would have to say. But very, uh, very beautiful to walk around. Next to it, you have the parks, and you can get there very easily to the Eiffel Tower. Now, for those of you who've already been to Paris, many of you, and who are not planning on going again, you have many other options in the port of La Havre. For instance, there is Mont Saint Michel, and this is a bit further. This is a three-hour drive, but this is one of the wonders of the Western world. That's what they say. It dates back to the 700s. And uh, this is a Gothic style Benedictine Abbey. Now, why is it so beautiful? Because it sits in a bay. So you have one of the greatest tides pulling the water back and then back to the land again. So if you, back in the days, there wasn't this causeway that there is now. So when the pilgrims came there, they had to run in high speed to make it to the Abbey. And then they had to be lucky with the quicksand, of course. So uh, nowadays, there are 30 full-time residents here uh, on the island, mainly for the tourists who come there. And if you want to go all the way to the top, that is 365 steps. So if you have plans to go here, wear your comfortable shoes. Of course, we're also very close to the beaches of Normandy. I don't think I have to explain to anybody D Day, June 6, 1944, which took place here, and you'll see a lot of these memories, the D Day invasion, that are ingrained here in the landscape. Of course, there is also the, the cemeteries that overlook the sea, and you have the entire coast where you can have a scenic drive around that area. Now, related to that is Bajou. Bajou is remarkable for quite a few things because it was one, it was the first city that was. Um, that was rescued after D-Day, so on the morning of June 7th. And the second reason why it's so uh, why it's so popular is because of this tapestry. And uh, this tapestry is 68 meters long and has 58 scenes of the uh, the, the Norman in invasion of England that took place in 1066. So this was a, a gift for King Matilda, and it's actually in Bajou. It used to be um, used to be housed at the cathedral. It's a French city, so there's another Notre Dame Cathedral, uh, but they actually moved it to the Bajou Tapestry Museum. So that's where you can uh, where you can admire it now. Actually, it's not really a tapestry; they call it more an embroidered cloth. But the city of Bajou is very interesting. It's still very old, as is Giverny. Now, this is a bit further again, two hours driving, but definitely for the art lovers as well as the. Uh, Impressionism devotees a place to visit because here you can have a look at Monet's house. Now I already know that my colleagues talked about that. You know Monet lived here until his death in 1926. But this place was a great inspiration for him as well as for other Impressionist artists. So the town of Giverny as well as Rouen are very, um, very rich places when it comes to the history and also the history of the, of the art. Now, we also know Rouen from another important um, historical event, that was uh, Jeanne d'Arc. She was actually uh, tried and uh, burned at the stake here at the town square. There are many uh, horrible things happened in the history of France. Um, but Rouen, again, definitely has been bombed during the Second World War, uh, so they left this mark, but there's still a lot of these timbered houses when you can walk around. There is the cathedral, of course, 
and the picturesque street. It's a bit of a bigger city. There's a university as well. So it's very alive, very nice place to, uh, to walk around and have a look at the local French life. Now, the French cuisine will never disappoint us and definitely not here in uh, the Normandy region where it's known for uh, butter, cream and cheese. So uh, yeah, we might have to hit the gym a few times before we get there and after that. Um, what do we find typical for this region? Of course, our camembert cheese, the soft cheese when you slice it open, it almost drips out. Big fan, of course. Um, goes very well with the baguette. The, the mussels are very popular here in this region, Bretagne, Normandy, when you go to the coast. Um, the apple pie is Tarte Normande, that's very typical for that region. It's basically the dough on the bottom and then only apples on the top goes very well with a calvados, that's the sweet apple uh, apple liquor. Apples are very uh, very popular here in the Normandy region and the macaroon of course. Hint, my favorite color is pink. So, so what to bring ashore? As we're making our way to Europe, the weather is unpredictable. My friends from the Netherlands know that it can start raining all of a sudden. So bring an umbrella. Also a good idea is to bring a sweater with you at all times, but also your sunscreen because you never know what's gonna happen. We're gonna use the Euro in these two countries. And uh, the exchange rate for one US dollar is 0 0.72. Euro. So I always recommend people to have a little bit of the local currency with you. Of course you can pay with credit card at most places but it's always handy if you want to get a bottle of water or a uh, or small souvenir to pay in cash. If you do have your shore excursion make sure uh, that you have your ticket and meet us at the right place and time and you will all need your, um, your personal A pass to get off the ship. Bring your camera, you might take a lot of pictures here on the ship, so make sure you have enough memory space and battery when we hit, uh, when we hit the ports. So ladies and gentlemen, this is all that awaits you in our first two ports of call of Le Havre and Lisbon. In a few, few days time, I'll do a second uh, destination talk about Bruges and Dover, and you'll also get more information about the port of Amsterdam on channel four. So thank you very much for joining me today and have a great day at sea.